What is up everyone? JD here. Hope you're doing well. Got a review for you. Let's get into it. All right, guys, we're going to be taking a look at a pass around that's coming in today. It's a new NAS from Tuya, and I'm excited to share it with you. We're taking a look at the Tuya Shocker. So what we're going to be doing today when we take a look at the shockers, we're going to do some profile comparisons. We're going to do weight, and then we're just going to jump into my thoughts and impressions and talk about the shocker. All right, let's kick it off with a couple of comparisons. Here it is against the Migron Curex 2, which I consider to be more of a medium-sized EDC, and I got some dirt <laughs> from where I was opening boxes, I bet, on my, my Curex 2. And I don't know why the Shocker is wanting to vibrate here on the table, but apparently it's very excited to be here. Here it is against the Amorite, and as you can see, the Shocker is actually a small EDC. Let's go ahead and move the Amorite out of the way. We're going to bring out the Shaman, which is very comparable to the PM2. The Amorite was very comparable to the Rat1. For those that are always asking where those traditional knives are, those knives are old as dirt, guys. Those Rats will never come back on this channel they're old there's so many better options for the money out there i'm sorry but i will let you know these are the same size as those here it is against the para 3 which is a very comparable knife you can see if you like para 3 size this is going to be right up your alley let's do some profile comparisons really quick here it is against the flat scaled para 3 lightweight and as you can see with those contour titanium scales a little bit thicker i know it's hard to see because it is dark and then we'll bring the migron out here the migron is comparable almost the same thickness with those contoured scales both of these have contoured scales and because it's slick they're sliding off of each other let's just really quick check the height and length out against these two you can see it actually is more compact let's do this there you go more compact than both both height length much more compact and then for those of you out there that are ruler guys and that are not knife comparison guys especially if you're worried about it being with the rut here it is on the ruler and best I can coming in at seven and a quarter inches I'm going to call it uh, overall blade length three and a quarter with three inches of cutting edge so there's your ruler measurements I know I did that kind of fast but I spit them out and you can rewind if you want to check it last but not least because I'm really trying to get to the review part of this weight coming in at 3.6 ounces guys it's a small knife it's all titanium you know that right about that three and a half ounce is going to be really light in the pocket to me anything under five ounces is easy to carry daily i have never had an issue with it let's jump into the knife first and foremost we're going to talk about the ergos it has a very neutral handle shape a little bit of contouring here to me it's a three finger knife eh, i can almost get the pinky on there but i slide off of the back so to me, it's a confident three finger knife. I'm able to sort of get the pinky on there. It's a little hard for me to do. Now you can choke up a little bit here and hang off the back. Like I use my middle finger to let my index finger rest on. And then I'm able to get all four fingers on here very comfortably. And I'd be able to perform any cutting tasks that I'm gonna do with this in this grip. It's not gonna be an issue. The contouring helps a lot. Um, I don't really feel this. I was really surprised. I was thinking that I was going to feel that maybe if you're a lefty and you're predominantly left-handed and you're just kind of switching and closing it kind of in that nature. Um, I can actually land my thumb because of the way the lock bar is placed on here. I can land my thumb right on the scale comfortably and just use the inside of the cutout to flick up it doesn't make that detent very stout so you gotta get gotta figure out like how to grip it without starting to roll over onto the lock bar because you can lock it into place if you try to do it that way 
I don't really feel like it's comfortable left-handed landing on the pocket clip. I think it's better, personally, for me, just to kind of land with the thumb. Hopefully you can see that behind the lock bar and just flick it up. It's it's a lighter detent, so it's not going to be a huge issue. Access to the lock bar is okay. They really helped because it's almost flat. You can see there's not much relief there at all. It's almost flush. You have a little bit of it standing proud, but what they did was they knocked it out and they milled it down. And to me, you can go in and dig in and drop it just fine. Like, honestly, it's not a complaint. It's just a tight fit. For me, I find that it's really easy to slide it over or to, from the you know used position, it's easy to kind of lift up and close it. But I know a lot of people like to fidget, so it's going to work. It just keep in mind if you have large or bigger hands, th this is a little bit of a tight fit, not awful. Surprisingly, I thought I was going to really feel like this. When you rub across, you feel that pocket clip, but when it's in hand, it really works. Like, I don't feel any immediate poke. It's just you can feel the outline of the pocket clip in the hand. So I really like that. Um, no play. No, no play side to side, like I'm wrenching on it. Ooh, a little bit of lock rock. It clicks. I don't think it's disengaging, though. I wonder if it would benefit from a little bit of a lock bar tune. Uh, I think Lefty said he wasn't going to mess with these anymore before they go through the pass around. He would wait till they got back if he wanted to do anything. But when I really wrench, I can I can feel it click. I can't, can't spine whack test it. It's not mine. I don't know if Kevin did it in his. Detent is a little light. I honestly think this would benefit from a lock bar tune. Uh, I would say, you know, if Kevin gets this back, if I don't think he'll watch my video, but if he can remember, I would do a little bit of a tune to that lock bar. I feel like, and maybe it's because it's been in the past round, but I think I'm early on this rotation. I think it would benefit from a little bit of a tune. Let's get it down. Look at some cutting. All right, we're in the garage. Let's see what the edge is like on the Shaka. Nice. Feels good, a little thick, not awful. I'm gonna grab a piece of cardboard here and uh, I'm just gonna grab a section off with a draw cut. Nice draw cut there. Got single ply, pretty cheap cardboard. Uh, nothing special here. Let's just see. Yeah, moves through nice, guys. Really nice. Not a super uh, big test here. Just wanted to show the cutting performance on it. Seems fine. Probably could use a little bit of a strop. And uh, let me just clean it off. See what the coating looks like. Yeah, coating cleans right up. Very nice coating from Tuya. So let's kick it back up to the desk. So as you can see, this hollow grind, really slicey, nice edge, 20 CV. I think they're heat treating it at 61, 62, if I recall correctly, probably 61 after they apply this diamond DLC, this diamond coated DLC. And I think the diamond coated just represents the fact that it has like that diamond sheen to it. And you can see the grind lines, both from the blade being grinded down and then the knife grind for cutting you can see both those grind lines in this finish it's a very beautiful finish guys nice thin slicey edge it works really well jimping here very comfortable in this choke back position so if you if you need as much of the blade's edge as you can but you got to control where you're pointing the blade to that's going to really come in handy here doesn't work too much here i can't i can't get back to it but the spoon does so when you're choking up with the spoon and you're coming out to the tip to, the do, de to do detailed work, it works really nicely. I feel locked in, so puncture tasks are going to work really well. So I appreciate that. It does have that option if you needed to in a pinch. I don't think I mentioned earlier this is milled out internally. So, it, you know, to help get it down to that three and a half ounce weight. Let's bring it up here. You can see it is milled out internally on both sides behind the lock bar. Where are we at? I'm sorry, above the lock bar, not behind it. I, I, I forget when I say behind it, people look back here, but I meant behind it like back <laughs> on top or on bottom, I guess, because we're looking at it upside down. Um, but there is a milling there and then tons of relief cut 
on that show side scale there as well. So there you go. That's how they get that weight down a little bit with it being the full titanium. I like the jumping on that backspacer. I actually do feel that. I feel like that really does help with the grip, especially when you're back here and you're trying to disengage it. My fingers are landing on it. So it's really helpful with it being a little bit smaller, a little bit more slender to have that extra grip back there. But it's not so aggressive that it's obnoxious or uncomfortable. So they struck a good balance there. I like that a lot. It's a little bit bigger jimping than it is on the blade spine. So this is a little bit bigger, a little bit more spaced apart. But they feel equally grippy. I wish they'd have done blacked out hardware on this model. I think being all blacked out would be cooler. But I think some people out there would probably prefer a little bit of pop of color. Looks like it's T6 hardware, T8 pivot. Feels like ceramic bearings in the pivot. And they look stamped. I feel like a little bit of a detent tune man would go a long way. It is a guillotine, but I think tuning it and making it a shaker would really benefit this knife a ton. I think the deployment would be more crisp. And I think that would get rid of that little click. It's not rocking a ton, but you can feel some clicking happen in there. And I think getting, whoops, I pushed it too far. I think getting that lock bar over just a little bit. I can't quite do both. I guess let me. Yeah, so putting just ever so slight. <clears throat> excuse me. Ever so slight pressure on that lock bar got rid of the lock rock when I was testing it just then. Just pushing it in. I wasn't squeezing, but I just needed to put a little pressure on it and hold it so where I can rock it. Without it. Yeah, it's gone. And then it comes back. Hold on. Let me double check that. It's hard to do this safely. <laughs> All right. Let me put a little bit more. Uh, it reduced it. It didn't completely get rid of it, but that's not necessarily the best way to test it either, if I'm being completely honest. And it could just be this example, and it could be that it's a pass round. Could be... Could be that the lock bar is dirty. I didn't really think about that. Let's just see. Or the interface. Uh, dirty meaning oils on it. <laughs> Let's see there. Not much of anything visible came off. No, it's still there. Um, it's a cool knife. Now, I think this knife, if I recall correctly, is coming in at $285. That is a little bit pricey, but I think that is because they did work with a designer on this one. And I think that when you have a designer involved in order for it to be equitable, you know, the price does go up a little bit. Even when you're looking at the all satin version of this one, which is beautiful, by the way, in this picture, it's still 285 and you know i would say if you really like the design and you like the size it's a well-built knife and uh the price isn't awful you know for 299 you can get a padre for 240 you can get a Django or an s towel or a towel so there's competition out there that's going to make an argument for the knife also 199 you can get a fractus 199 you can get a Migron Curex in titanium with M390 or Pegos if you prefer the drop point. So it is it is very competitive what you can get opposed to getting this one, especially when you're looking at the Kungus. But I don't think that I've seen anything from other designers that looks quite like this. You got the Poon, you got some flare going on on the scales, and you do have a very beautiful design. But you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you like the shocker? Don't you like the shocker? And uh, how do you feel about the price? I feel like it's a little bit of a reach. I think $250 would have been a bit better to swallow, but I don't know that it makes it equitable. I don't know the behind the scenes, so I can't talk to that. 
Let me know what you think down in the comments. Shout out to everyone out there that likes, uses those links and comments. It does help the channel and I appreciate you guys for that. It helps me with the, al the algorithm. I hope all of you have a fantastic weekend. Until next time, peace.